Recording in progress. New AI oriented culture. In specific, one of the research shows that majority of workers will need to adapt to using AI rather than be replaced by AI. There are certain fast facts predicts about AI. By 2030, the global GDP would raise by 14% as a result of AI enabled activity that is equal to $15.7 trillion. For the most part, there are many active startups which has remained relatively steady, while the number of AI startups has seen exponential growth. The global revenue from AI for enterprise application is projected to grow from $1.62 billion in 2018 to $31.2 billion in 2025. A self-learning supercomputer named Nautils can predict the future and it can become famous. Uh, it became famous when it was able to locate Osama bin Laden. Basically, AI is not just a system, but it is implemented in the system. With this, let's start the session. Today's session will execute in two phases. The first phase will be distinguished, will be taken by a distinguished guest. Uh, will, uh, he will deliver his keynote address. And the second phase, we have three student presenters who are, who are going to present their findings and understanding the applications of AI. At the end of all the three students' presentation, the speaker will share his observation and remarks and also announces the best presenter of the day. To begin with, we have Sir, Mr. V. Krishnapa Hulimani, keynote speaker of the day. Mr. V. Krishnapa Hulimani is a senior AI developer who has been driven by intellectual curiosity to find solutions to most of the uncultured problems using the power of AI. Overall, he has seven plus years of experience with knowledge on statistics, data science, artificial intelligence, and deep learning. He has played a key role in many industries across different domains as a statistician, data scientist, and senior AI developer. Sir, on behalf of Soundarya Institute of Management and Science, Department of Computer Science and Pure Science, I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. I also welcome our compassionate principal, Dr. Suresh C. Hegadi, and CEO of Soundarya Institute of Management and Science, Mr. Kirtan Kumar. Our welcome to all the student presenters, Pranita, Nayant Kumar, and Rashmi B. I also welcome my all teacher uh, teaching fraternities and my dear students. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Mr. Krishnappa Hudumani, sir, to take over the session. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much for a warm welcome. And uh, even before going ahead, uh, I would li like to just extend my gratitude to uh, the members of Saunara Institute of Management for uh, choosing me as one of their uh, mentor for uh, the entire journey that we are trying to go ahead, right? So today we'll try to more understand about uh, AI application industry. And whenever we are trying to talk more about AI, I know for sure most of the people over here would know what is AI, right? And there's not much necessary for me to just tell what is uh, artificial intelligence for everyone, right? So what we'll try to more understand is how are we trying to see AI in future? We'll try to more understand about what are the risks and what are the different applications and where not AI can be applica applicable. And some of those features also we'll try to understand, right? So as everyone would know about more about AI, this is what we are trying to call about, where we are trying to just mimic more of human brain, right? Where whatever humans are trying to think and we are trying to just mimic the intelligence of human brain. And that is where what we are trying to just create an artificial neural network with the simple use of uh, neurons, right? However, we are trying to see in the generation of neurons the same way we are trying to see a uh, lot of different techniques being evolved on the same, right? On the same note, what we try to also understand is different AI techniques that would be evolved. So one thing that also comes to my mind is uh, why not? Why aren't we trying to see AI being evolved 20 years back or even 30 years back? 
even still then ai was existent but we were not trying to just make use of those technology to a greater ex uh, extent then so what are we trying to just do is here we are trying to just understand why are we trying to see ai in a greater boom at uh, today's uh, in context so one of the reasons that i'm trying to just highlight is this data right so here what are we trying to just see is uh, 60 second every uh, uh, on a, one minute how much amount of data has been gathered by each of different companies right i know for sure everyone would use about uh, different technologies and different apps also today and here are different things that you can also see today in today's world how are companies capturing our data in every single minute right so a lot of these uh, different applications which you already know about i would not stress much but just look at the numbers in just single minute how much amount of data has been collected by different companies whenever data is been collected by all of these different companies to a vast extent why not we just expect them uh, to just use this data in a proper format so that any analytics or ai driven techniques can be dwelled on it so that any applications we can build and the same thing that we are trying to also see today right so whenever you are trying to see youtube different recommendations that we are trying to get based on our preferences whenever we are trying to see facebook before we were trying to just tag our friends now we don't have to do that and also places as well being located by uh, understanding the scenarios itself and also the location rights right also we can see a lot of different uh, search engines being evolved apart from google as well where uh, different technologies that are coming up based on evolution of ai itself right to just name a few a little different companies that are trying to just capture over here you can just have have it just look through right so let's try to understand different landscape of ais whenever we are trying to just call about different landscape of ais these are the th uh, uh, different essential parts of ai that we talk about beat computer vision see whenever uh, we are trying to just mimic human brain right so as humans we know for sure we try to see someone we try to talk to someone as i'm trying to do it right now with all of you and also we try to listen as well and also we try to just enact on things that we are trying to see through right so in the same way what i'm trying to just do is here uh, we are trying to just make sure to know something by uh, different formulas so one of which i'm trying to just know for sure i'm trying to just analyze on the things that i'm trying to see now right i try to see an object i try to identify it and all those these things detection i also try to also see one more object i try to differentiate how the other object is from right so that is what i try to do it by computer vision so one of those technologies where it helps a lot for me to just use those algorithms for uh, understanding or identifying classifying differentiating each of the objects around right and there's one more uh, different concepts called uh, reinforcement learning that you are trying to see over here so this is what we are trying to just understand uh, by trying to uh, uh, address the environment that we are trying to talk about right so reinforcement learning is where uh, let's say you talk about a chess game or let's say you talk about any other different uh, carrom or any any game that you are trying to uh, like about right so here what are we trying to just do is we try to understand the game aesthetics so what are different rules that we have to play what are different optimization techniques that we can just involve on that all those being taken care by this reinforcement learning where the agent completely understands the environment and enacts enacts upon it that is what reinforcement learning is all about and whenever we are trying to say say image analytics there is also one more biggest uh, uh, industry that we are trying to see today so let's say if you are trying to just identify some of your friends even today you can see a lot of uh, ai cameras that are coming in for every mobiles that we see through so you you can see one of those applications that we see is uh, ai uh, uh, using AI, using ai cameras we are trying to just detect age of a person right so that is also one of the analytical uh, insights that we can just derive from the face analytics right a lot of different things also that we can just derive today and one of those applications is extracting age out of your uh, uh, eyesight right so that is what we are trying to just do in terms of image analytics also we have one more major part that we are trying to talk about today is something more about uh, natural language processing so whenever we are trying to talk more about natural language processing as the name itself is says language processing uh whenever we are trying to just handle different texts right so we know for sure a lot of different text analytics that we try to also do in terms of today's scenario right we can also capture text in any amount of different scenarios today right 
so one of those i can just uh, uh, just gather uh, uh, whatsapp images and i can see what is the most frequent uh, term being used by a lot of different people i can do that also i can also see what is a word being next to be predicted after one single word being used i can also do that and also i can do language translation as well and i can do a lot of different applications using nlp right so generally we call it as nlp as natural language processing as many of you know about right so also there is simulation modeling which we are also try to just develop different tools based on ai wherein uh, uh, it's a drag and drop tools that we are trying to see in wherein lot of simulation that happens mostly with respect to hardware implementation right wherein whenever we are trying to just connect through different hardware to uh, apply ai on it wherein we try to just call it as simulation modeling techniques right so this is where we are trying to see lot of hardware uh, that is stepping in even today's world scenario when you see lot of uh, nvidia tools lot of uh, uh, different applications of even uh, 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 deep learning techniques are been evolving on the simulation modeling today right so deep learning again it's an ex extracted way of uh, our machine learning uh, wherein we are trying to just make use of neural networks to a greater extent right so for different uh, techniques we have different uh, deep learning algorithms we are trying to just make use of those some of them we'll try to also see over the ppt i'll try to share you some of the deep learning techniques that we are trying to use to a major extent today right so also data science is also a part of ai or we can also try to just name it as machine learning a simple algorithm that we are trying to also see in terms of uh, implementation of ai right i think in today's scenario if i'm trying to see a uh, lot of different tools that we are trying to do on automation basis uh five or six years back if i was working in a, one of the cottage industry wherein we were trying to just make sure to differentiate cotton types so a good quality bad, uh, for, uh, versus a bad quality when we don't had any tools as such also we didn't to use um, much of uh, programming instance uh, along with wherein we were trying to use a lot of different uh, ml techniques wherein uh, through a use of excel itself we were trying to do a lot of uh, uh, uh statistical analysis to just differentiate uh, uh, each of these types so that were all the different parts that we are trying to see in today in con today's context if i'm trying to talk through all those is just a fl flow so it's all automated right now and also most of the mathematical techniques that we are trying to talk about in machine learning happens at the back end and that is what we are trying to see today right and robotics is also a part of ai that we are trying to talk about which is more dealt with respect to simulation modeling and this is all the uh, uh scope where we are trying to just make sure we are trying to just, um, uh, bring a combination of hardware with respect to software right and that is all the scope about robotics that we are trying to see today and also speech synthesis the same thing again uh voice translation is one of the example that i can just talk through also you can see with respect to whatever uh, the impulse of the speech is also i can just capture just by analyzing just a speech or a voice i can just know the emotion of a person even that can also be captured with respect to speech there are n number of different applications among each of these scenarios that we talk about in ai right some of them are highlighted over here even others uh, applications that we'll try to just see over in the next small video right so here a uh, small video that we are trying to just uh, look through around so wherein uh, uh, you are trying to just understand more about uh, uh a small applications of ai just watch through this video you'll get to know a lot of different things around this video just a one minute video we'll try to what watch can you actually do about it we already have the technology to read the inner voice in your mind so imagine controlling your phone with your inner thoughts writing your report without a keyboard playing video games without a controller or walking into stores that already know what you want to buy Imagine seeing the world with augmented reality and commuting a bit safer, working a bit faster, exercising in a way that's actually fun. What if we could restore some of the ability to walk, give some of the sense of touch, enhance eyesight, fight disease, or modify DNA? What happens when robots start building our homes, delivering our news, pouring our beers, and driving us home? These are not examples of the far distant future. These are examples of what is possible right now. And with artificial intelligence, the pace of human progress is about to become not so human at all. So how much is your world about to change? Different applications that we were trying to see, right? Uh, 
and a lot of different applications whenever we are trying to see can anyone just put me over the chat how many types of different applications we just saw in the video that was just even less than a minute can anyone just tell me how much how many of uh, uh, different uh, videos that you are trying to see different applications that's more than 15 even, even you can, I can just pass through when and you can just see it later on. So there are different applications that we just saw through, right? So here, uh, uh, different applications that we were trying to see in terms of AI, which were already been implemented, right? And the, all of these technologies, whatever we are trying to just talk now, it's all about with things that we are already seeing, which are implemented and people are using it, right? And also whenever we are trying to talk about AI, it's more than beyond what we are trying to think now. Right. So we'll also try to just understand more about those things right now. Right. So today we're trying to talk about personal assistance. We try to just use it on hands on wherein talk about Alexa, talk about the city, talk about anything that we are trying to talk more, know more about understanding these technologies. Right. So that is what we are trying to see in terms of automation in uh, understanding these uh, scenarios. Right. So we're also we're trying to see in terms of AI lawyers, wherein uh, Ross is one of those. Wherein I think four or five years back, I had written a small research paper on this and a uh, lot of things came up through and uh, uh, people already had a uh, lot of discussions about that, wherein uh, we are trying to make sure the humans can easily uh, reconcile of a lot of human technologies in terms of understanding their behavior. So whenever we are trying to just make sure, you can also see uh, the accuracy rate at which a uh, human can, uh, a machine can argue with respect to human. And that was more accurate than whatever human perception that we were trying to see today. Also, experience also counts a lot in which, uh, in terms of few uh, data points that we are trying to talk about, we can train algorithm to a faster extent and make it more uh, efficient, right? Even uh, we are trying to see in terms of AI doctors as well, of uh, IBM Watson and uh, AI automation drivers, AI investors. Automation drivers, I don't have to make sure to uh, give you a small an uh, analysis on this. So I, I know for sure most of the people would know more, more about uh, uh, AI techniques. So that is what uh, we are trying to just see in today, right? So there are AI investors as well. We are trying to just see one of those examples being given as Numer AI. You can just see through wherein a lot of your investment activities are being controlled by AI itself, right? So we just have to just monitor what is happening and what is not being done. That's all. That is more than enough for us to know more about AI investors and face analysis uh, or facial recognition, I even talk about any three big giants, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, all of these are players in this today, right? So in any of this, we are trying to understand there are a lot of different applications are coming in. And that is why we are trying to just see a lot of different uh, uh, revenues that we are trying to just uh, look into in the market, right? If you're trying, trying to just see the uh, uh, growth of market demand of AI, you can just see now the peak of AI being uh, increased right from 2018, right? So you are trying to just anywhere see from uh, 10 uh, billion numbers to a number of uh, 126 billions, right? So here we are trying to just more understand about the revenue numbers that we are trying to just generate in terms of US dollars, right? So whenever we have a lot of these advantages in trying to know more about this AI, and this is what we are trying to just arrive at, these figures and a lot of different applications, even these are just the prediction figures that we are trying to see. It can go even beyond this in coming years. So the overall the market share or the market size, if I'm trying to just talk about today. So here there are uh, different uh, uh, sectors that I have just mentioned. In terms of domain aesthetics, we know for sure AI can be applicable anywhere, right? So here, some of the asterisks that I'm trying to just mention over here today are uh, healthcare, and we know for sure by 2020, why is healthcare being highlighted to, to a greater extent because of the pandemic issues, right? So there are a lot of different demands that we are trying to see in with respect to pandemic effects. And also that is the only reason why we are trying to see today in terms of AI, why healthcare sector is more beneficial because of this, right? So there are a lot of uh, drug analytics that we can just do in terms of understanding what is the best suitable uh, format for any of this healthcare techniques. And also we are trying to see in terms of BFSI, so banking financial sector, wherein a lot of different uh, 
accounting and a lot of different banks started inculcating ai also we try to see financial investments also being increased in terms of uh, uh, these pandemic times right so in terms of law again retail industry advertisement be it anything we are trying to see a lot of ai techniques being uh, applied in any of these sectors but major concern is more about healthcare and bfsi that is what we are trying to see today right so in terms of understanding this uh, global market let's also try to understand some of the techniques that we actually talk about in ai right so here uh, i know for sure many of you would have known about these techniques right right from tra traditional approaches uh, to a greater approaches of these so we are trying to just talk about traditional approach and these are nothing but the advanced techniques that we are trying to talk about so traditional techniques that we talk about is just basic statistical techniques or inferential statistics or a basic logistic regression that we talk about right so but advanced techniques is what i'm trying to talk about in terms of transfer learning deep learning neural networks and reinforcement learning right so here some of the techniques that you might also be known about in terms of different applications and all those right so in terms of uh, uh, beat clustering beat ensemble techniques beat regression these are all the techniques even that we use in industry today as well to a greater extent also let's try to see how are these ai techniques being used in different formats in industry as well right and if i'm trying to just show you now uh, different techniques that is being used in the industry today in terms of different sectors also you can see more in which way when you talk about electronics or semiconductors even agricultural or any of those feed forward networks are uh, nothing but more about a basic neural networks is what we are trying to see in terms of automotive banking and uh, retail industry to a greater extent in the same way you can also see rnn in terms of insurance why is insurance because more of which we try to just deal with time series data in terms of insurance markets right and that is the only reason why we are trying to see uh, recurrent neural networks being used to a greater extent today right in terms of convolution uh, neural networks that is cnn which deals with images and videos and this is where we are trying to see automotive industry being used into a greater extent right in terms of which uh, gen uh, gans generative artificial neural networks more on which is being used in oil and gas even in uh, retail as well so today we are, whenever we are trying to talk about uh, retail industry i think uh, if you know more about mintra being offering right today you don't have to just uh, uh or go to a, uh, a store and buy a uh, different clothing apart uh, accessories and come back you don't have to do that so how it is trying to just transform us you just have to walk into a store there will be a number of uh, detectors being kept in and you just have to just see through uh, how a particular shirt would fit on you that just appears as a image and the same thing i think you can also try to see in, in terms of uh, uh, specs market where you can just go through uh uh on uh, to a store you don't have to just wear it and always try to see it you can just uh, try to focus your uh, face it'll try to just detect whatever the best uh, suitable frame that would uh, suit you right in the same way even that is also happening in uh, uh, mintra as well even they are trying to just inculcate the same to a number of different stores today right so you just have to walk into a store uh, a particular apparel whatever you are trying to just buy on, on different clothing sectors you just have to stand in and it will just represent how it actually looks over you so you don't have to try and then buy it right it just uh, with appearance you can just detect it will automatically try to detect based on your preferences right the same thing we are trying to also do in terms of uh, retail industry as well also a lot of different traditional analytical techniques that we are trying to talk about is also mentioned over here wherein lot of different techniques that we already see today are been implemented to a greater extent and maximum of which you can see regression analysis are uh, been used by in a, on a major context in terms of insurance and also in terms of uh, electronics or semiconductor industry and same thing if you are trying to talk about ensemble learning techniques and also different classification techniques we are also trying to just see in terms of insurance sectors also in terms of healthcare systems and all those also in terms of healthcare if you are trying to see all of these techniques whatever we try to try to talk about today are been implemented to a greater extent right so this is major advantage of this is wherein different techniques that we are trying to note uh, or learn today uh, how much of these techniques are useful in different sectors is what we are trying to understand more about right and again uh, one more essential aspect is uh, to understand where exactly the potential of ai can be improved upon right so these are the applications that we try to see wherein uh, there is a uh, 
drastic improvement in application of AI that we are trying to see today. Here, uh, as you're trying to see today, uh, major of which uh, we are trying to see in terms of uh, increment where value of AI can be increased to a greater extent is in terms of travel, travel industry or the transport and logistics and also retail industry. All of these four sectors, I think these five sectors that I'm trying to just talk about today, wherein we are trying to see uh, AI being implemented to a greater extent. There are a lot of potential that we can see today when uh, for application of AI techniques over here. So you can also just see through uh, in terms of applications as well, wherein a lot of other industries, when I'm trying to talk about banking or when I'm trying to just talk about healthcare, these systems are all, all systems wherein we are trying to see there is some saturation being evolved. So wherein a lot of automations are happening right now, but a lot of different uh, things that are not being unearthed in terms of law, uh, these uh, five techniques that I've just mentioned over here, these five sectors that I've just mentioned over here. So you can also try to see through, there are a lot of potential that can be bought in terms of travel, transport, retail, automotive, and even high-tech industries as well. So these are the five constant things that you can also look in wherein whenever you're trying to just make sure to uh, uh, follow your career in terms of uh, attaining a bigger uh, trademark in terms of AI as well, right? So in terms of this, you can also try to understand more about how are these things being implemented as well. Even in terms of application, you can also see the value. You can also just try to see uh, the improve performance improvement in terms of different applications being used in any of this, right? So in terms of uh, understanding AI, so in any industry you talk about generally, the key driver in industry is only three things. So either it can be a data-driven industry or it can be more about algorithm-driven or it can be more about a process-driven. So what do I mean by data-driven? It's more about any uh, company you try, try to talk about, it's more about data-driven company itself, wherein very, very few analytics has been done using visualization techniques, right? So under which, wherein a lot of uh, different visualization techniques that you might also know about is uh, using Tableau, Power BI, Quilic View. There are a lot of different companies which try to just uh, only uh, uh, try to just do a descriptive analysis in terms of just understanding the data. There are some more companies which we are trying to just see in terms of inculcating AI in terms of their applications is what we are trying to see is algorithm driven. Wherein we are trying to just apply AI and uh, uh, data science or machine learning uh, into our ecosystem to make sure to reap more benefits in terms of understanding the entire business process. Also, whenever we are trying to talk about one uh, another sector, it's more about process driven. And in more about process driven, it's a lot about just trying to make sure to optimize the process we are trying to talk about, right? One of those examples I can just give you in terms of RPA, robotic process automation. So wherein, whenever we are trying to talk about robotic process automation, also we are trying to see in AI also being implemented in RPA. We are also trying to just call it as IPA as well. Intelligent process automation is what we call today. So here, whenever we are trying to just understand more about data-driven companies or algorithm-driven companies or even process-driven companies, we have to make sure where exactly uh, the applications of AI would fall in, right? So in more about uh, thinking about these uh, techniques, thinking about these uh, 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 automatic uh, automation that we are trying to see through, we just have to understand more about where AI, where and how AI can be apply, uh, applied in a more efficient manner, right? And that is what we are also trying to see today in terms of whichever company that we talk about, right? So there will be a number of different companies which are completely data driven. There are a number of companies which are algorithm driven. There are a number of companies which are completely process driven, right? Wherein not much of, uh, 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 when we, this is what we are trying to also understand, wherein whenever there is process being involved, people are not trying to just make use of AI today. Also, there is a lot of scope in that also. And that is why we, I have just stated now in terms of understanding where AI can be implemented, travel, transport, and logistic. These are the main things where process implementation is highly essential. And that is where we are trying to also see potential uh, of AI can be improved to a greater extent in these kinds of sectors, right? And that is what we understood in terms of application of uh, AI in terms of different streams of uh, industries, which is data driven, which is algorithm driven, and also process driven. And a lot of people would also try to ask me uh, in terms of applications of AI, uh, when we talk about it, uh, we already know that it can be applied to any sector that we talk about. Some of uh, usage of AI, some of these uh, highlighted points that I have just noted over here, 
and I've just given over here as different sectors that we talk about, right? So you can also see different uh, technical uh, aspects of which, and uh, in terms of education industry, we, we are trying to talk about, it's more about plagiarism check or automated uh, uh, grading of your entire papers, whatever uh, exams that you're trying to take in. Uh, also some of those uh, virtual learnings also can be implemented or even adaptive learning. And a lot of different things also can be done under just uh, educational sector itself, right? So a lot of different things also that you can just make use of uh, uh, AI in different way. And all of these things are highlighted. You can just go through when I'm trying to just share you the entire deck over, right? So different companies that we try to talk about, we already know because of AI demand, a lot of different companies that are coming in and just in just one or two years that we are trying to see in a lot of different companies that are coming through with respect to implementation of AI, right? So also a lot of people just ask me uh, in terms of uh, understanding AI. Uh, ninth uh, is trying to just ask me how for, AI is being used in defense. Uh, let me try to just answer you that. Uh, in terms of defense industry, we are trying to just make sure, uh, uh, you, you might have also known something about intrusion uh, that happens in defense today. A uh, lot of breaches that happens in uh, uh, different connections that we're trying to see in, in terms of communications, right? So one of those uh, AI techniques that we try to use is to just understand that malware techniques, right? in terms of uh, defense. Even there are uh, aerial vehicles that also we try to see in, wherein uh, we don't need human to go to a border and try to see in, where exactly we try to see uh, uh, other people trying to fetch in. So we don't have to do that. There are a lot of unmanned aerial uh, vehicles that we are trying to see in today, wherein AI can use, of, with use of AI, it can detect a lot of intruders that are coming in. Even there are uh, a number of uh, detections that we can do, do in terms of drone technologies as well. That is in terms of understanding this, even in terms of uh, target identifications, wherever when we uh, know more about uh, uh, geological space locations, we don't have to make sure to uh, uh, pinpoint at a particular sector for uh, any uh, uh, defense to happen. So we just have to know more about prediction. In terms of prediction, we already would know what all, what is the next thing that we can do. Even in terms of that also, we can make sure how the target can be achieved in terms of identifying those. There are n number of different things. Even we are the one most major sector that we are trying to see in, in terms of gaming is uh, uh, auto, uh, automated gaming, even in augmented reality, wherein we are trying to see in a lot of different uh, games that are being evolved in the sector itself, right? So there are a lot of different things that we talk about in terms of AI. Defense also is one of the major sectors that you can look in. Uh, in applications of AI. Yeah, I hope uh, you could get that uh, answer uh, beneficial, right? Yeah, so also a lot of many people would try to ask, ask me, what is just uh, my core strength should be whenever I'm trying to just enter this sector, right? So I uh, tell everyone uh, to know more about these things and more critical concepts. So whenever I'm trying to just talk about core strengths in AI, this is what we are trying to look into in any individuals that we are trying to see in today who are entering industry, right? So those I'm trying to just highlight is more about domain knowledge, critical thinking, programming skills, and the last one is statistical knowledge or the mathematics knowledge. So these are the more, four most critical things that we are trying to see today in terms of uh, evaluating any uh, candidate, right? Whenever we are trying to talk about uh, evaluation of any candidate, the more thing is more about what is the math uh, knowledge that a person has, where exactly he can just implement uh, mathematical applications, right? So in terms of just identifying a distance between one object to other object, wherein you can just use Euclidean distance altogether for understanding the mathematical space between two points. Like that, there are a lot of different applications that you can use, right, using mathematical skills. Even in the same way, you can see programming skills. Without programming, none of the process can be cannot be handled in a smooth way, right? So even we do try to have some tests, a number of tests for understanding uh, how a, a person would understand a logic, right, behind a program. That is what we understood more of which in terms of programming skills, wherein any different problems is been given, wherein we try to just assess how skill is uh, how skilled a person in terms of coding, right? 
and critical thinking the main most essential aspect where a lot of students would lack in uh, uh, for making any judgment right it helps a lot of uh, analysis for to understand a business uh, right from defining a problem to implementing a problem as well implementing a solution to a particular problem wherein your critical thinking is the main most right even which machines cannot have uh, uh, get developed those sense of critical thinking this is what separates your a machine and a human wherein we cannot critically think exactly what uh, could be done in terms of machine understanding but essentially in terms of human there's one more part of which you can just make sure to differentiate between human and uh, a machine in terms of critical thinking and that's a most judgmental part that everyone has to learn more about understanding how to make a judgment in terms of knowledge obtained right and also as domain knowledge i have told you even today i saw a lot of different uh, presentations that would be going on wherein uh, people would talk more on applications of ai in health sector or applications of ai in cyber security or anywhere be it right understanding the domain is more essential today right so be it any of this applications whenever you are trying to talk through or whenever you are trying to uh, pose yourself to any of interviews make sure you are aware of all of these different concepts in terms of understanding your mathematical skills or statistical knowledge programming skills critical thinking is the main main and also your domain knowledge in terms of your domain knowledge if you are trying to be a study at, uh, you might be studying uh, your engineering now so your domain knowledge is more about understanding uh, computer techniques right computer science techniques right that is more of your domain knowledge right now in your ed education right understanding uh, whenever you are trying to just join different company you will be trying either healthcare or banking or uh, any other sector be it you will be trying to understand the entire company process that is what we call try to call it as domain knowledge right so these are the main main essential skills that we talk about in terms of understanding core strength of a you know a particular student or any aspirant that we are trying to talk about right so with that i'm trying to just end my session over here uh, with a just thank you note uh, all the best for your presentations any questions any particular questions from your end students you can post your questions in the chat box so there's a question okay okay Let's see. Yeah, I think if uh, yeah, any other questions? Thank you very much, sir. It was truly orienting us on AI and its application. Now I request Pranita, student of third year BCA, for her presentation. Pranita, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Madhuri. Good evening, everyone. I'll be presenting quickly. The emergence of artificial intelligence in cyber security. AI is changing the game for cyber security. As cyber attacks grow in volume and complexity, artificial intelligence is helping under-resourced security operations analysts stay ahead of threats. AI technologies like machine learning and natural language processing enable analysts to respond to threats with greater confidence and speed. AI is trained by consuming billions of artifacts from both structured and unstructured sources such as blogs and news stories. Through machine learning and deep learning techniques, the AI improves its knowledge to understand cybersecurity threats and cyber risk. AI can be both a blessing and a curse for cybersecurity. Business are increasing the pace of investment in AI system to defend against the next generation of cyber attacks. A new study from Capgemini Research Institute found two third of organizations acknowledge that they will not be able to respond to critical threats without AI. 
The Reinventing Cybersecurity with Artificial Intelligence Study surveyed 850 senior IT executives from IT information security, cybersecurity, and IT operations across 10 countries and seven business sectors and conducted in-depth interviews and found that building up cybersecurity defenses with AI is imperative for organizations. Now, let's take a look at some of the benefits of increasing AI into cybersecurity. The first one is data management. The availability of data at every phase of consumer engagement is increasing due to developing technologies. With the rapid collection, monitoring, and study of data, AI application in cybersecurity play a critical role in data security, accuracy, and abuse prevention. The second one is threat detection. Threats and other potentially harmful actions could also be detected using AI. Biometric logins, for example, are used to grant secure access by scanning impressions, retinas, or palm prints. Face recognition software is being used to provide security using AI technology. Real-time authentication. When AI is applied, the authentication framework may become much more dynamic and real-time. Multi-factor authentication gathers information about a user to analyze their behavior and retain their access rights. Phishing prevention. The most prevalent phishing sources may be detected by AI and reported to the system so that defenses may be prepared. Within seconds, AI can also tell the difference between a phony and a real website. Continuous monitoring. AI's calculative abilities and continuous evaluation of skills reveal which values would increase the efficiency and security of hardware and infrastructure. Here are some limitations of integrating AI into cybersecurity. However, discussion about the AI and security automation would be incomplete without talking about the three main drawbacks that are keeping AI from being a widely utilized tool. First one is, Companies would need a massive number of resources like memory, data, and processing power to create and operate on AI system. Obtaining all these precise data sets might take a long time and need a lot of resources, which some business can't afford. Another advantage is that hackers may use AI to test, develop, and upgrade their malware in order to make it AI-proof. In reality, AI-proof malware may be highly damaging since it can learn from existing AI tools and build more complex breach standard cybersecurity programs or even AI-enhanced systems. And AI-based security systems are continuously being improved by developers. An AI system that isn't well-developed can be useless and provide a lot of false positive findings. Here are some of the artificial intelligence cybersecurity tools. The first one is Symantec's targeted attack analytics tool developed by Symantec with the aim to expose covert and trained attacks. This tool is an amalgamation of AI and machine learning. Talking about the achievements of this tool, last year it managed to fight and disable Dragonfly 2.0 attack that aim to intrude into operational networks and various companies. Sophos Intercept X tool. Based on deep learning, neutral network except X of Sophos is a replication of human brain. Dark Trace Antigena. Dark Trace has turned about talks of AI in cybersecurity to reality and proved itself as a world leader in the field of AI. Its product Antigena is an operational self-defense system with the ability to detect and diffuse threat automatically. IBM QRadar Advisor. IBM gained its reputation for Watson technology and its tools of IBM use the same technology along with AI to fight cyber crimes. Vectra's Cognito. Based on AI software, Cognito of Vectra recognizes threats on real-life basis. It allows automatic supervision, program analysis, and threat detection with the help of algorithm-based behavioral detection. So, it is evident that AI technologies can be used in a variety of ways in cybersecurity. Sustainable, adaptive, flexible, and long-lasting cybersecurity solutions need rigorous analysis and study. Thank you.
Thank you, Pranita. It was indeed very informative presentation. Most of us know that cybercrime happening and AI will be the best solution for this. Today, you have oriented us. Thank you so much. Now, I request Nayant Kumar, student of third year BCA for the presentation. Nayant is a writer, captain of Sims IT Club and secretary of student council. Nayant, over to you. I'm your literature guy. Today evening, we'll explore about candlesticks and artificial intelligence used in trading. So uh, this is basically not a lecture. So for the simple reason, lectures are uh, meant to inform on a particular subject or uh, instruct. But on the contrary, we'll talk together like two friends and uh, we'll uh, know about the candlesticks and how artificial intelligence is being uh, used in this stuff. So what is candlestick first of all? Candlesticks are one second. Yes. So there are time frames for in, in trading. Okay. And to trade, the, we have a candlesticks in which the green one. Yes. The green one depicts like the buyers are more, and the red one depicts like the sellers are more. So where do we apply this first of all? So it can be applied in all like mutual funds and then stocks and the crypto. Wherever it is applicable, it can be applied. So next coming to like, what is AI in trading? So it is artificial intelligence is shaping the future of stock trading. Using artificial intelligence, robo advisors analyze millions of data points and execute trades at the optimal price. Analysts forecast markets with greater accuracy and trading firms efficiently mitigate a risk to provide for higher returns. So firstly, let's understand uh, how does this work, okay? So firstly, if there is a red candle, that is the um, bearish candle, it opens over here. It opens over here. And this is something as called as wick, this stick thing, red stick is wick. And this is the closure and even uh, this is a wick, okay? So what does this wick signify? This wick is a support to depict like the candlestick has been like um, possibly trying to reach over there but has not reached over there. So next, if it is a green, it opens like uh, at the down here bottom and same goes with the support. And this thing is the closure and that this is the stick and this is the closure. Okay. So whenever the candle begins, the red one begins from the upper side and the green one begins from the lower side. So how, how, how do you know like what is the uh, next thing which is going to happen in the trading? So uh, these are the signals like if it is uh, in this pattern, like uh, very much darker and uh, like thick one, then you can be sure like, yeah, the market is going to be up in the next moment. Okay. And if it is the like red one, then you can be sure like uh, it will go down. And these are the hammer ones, which are quite strong, which is uh, an indication of the price uh, reversal in the tradings. And this is like slightly strong ones. And this is not strong one because the wick is on the both side. As I have already said you, like the wicks are the support over here. So the support is on the both sides. So you cannot actually predict like what is going to happen in the like uh, next moment, what is going to happen over there, okay? So uh, th th these ones are the more weaker ones because you can't tell like where is uh, where is it going to go in the next moment. So um, next slide is yes, this is a hammer one. Same, this is the high thing. If if this kind of candles are uh, shown on your uh, trading pages, then you you can be sure like the market is going to be up. So uh, you might be having a question right now, like uh, then. If the like candlesticks are so easier to predict, then uh, 
uh, everyone can become rich right so why don't they become so there is a simple reason for that there is a thing called as the news okay so in in that time like news um, if the, the if the news is good the market is going to be up okay if the news is bad the market is going to be down it doesn't matter like if the candlestick is red or green okay for example there are various indicators okay that indicators means that is something like artificial intelligence artificial intelligence means it is something automated thing right so you you can see this is an adx indicator it has been programmed okay and you can see like whenever the market goes up the green shadow comes in see over here like if if there is a green shadow see the most of the candles are green itself look at here look at here these are the various indicators in in the next slide i will also show you the various indicators and the right values for it which you can use and um, by having no knowledge about the trading you can actually predict like uh, how the market is going to be but um, with that you all, you should also be aware of the news like what is happening in the market like how the elon musk uh, does everything you you already know about all the stuff see like currently see the market is on the upper side see this is the live market i am showing you okay see there is a green shadow so the candle is going up upwards okay so in the next slide yeah yeah look at this and uh, i i won't actually go very deep into these candlesticks because it becomes like very much of the long session so look at here like what is this pattern what is this pattern this is an evening star okay and what does happen like when the evening star comes it's time to go to the dark so see the whole market has gone down like possibly very much down so whenever there is an indication of this thing you might be pretty sure like the market is going to be down and these are the various indicators like parabolic uh, sar and then uh, alligators then stochastic rsi then adx then the awesome oscillator these are the, all this stuff you can use uh, for the tradings and uh, next coming into the trade watch yeah this is an interesting topic actually so uh, there are like a uh, top uh, five trade bots i have mentioned over here that is the meta stock then ticker on and then vector west trade ideas then holly ai stock trading bot so what does this do so these bots are someone like uh, which is programmed uh, to give you the predictions like uh, which stocks is going to be high today and which stock is going to be down today so it analyzes everything and what we just need to do is like the programming okay we, we actually connect it uh, through the various uh, terminals for the news also news thing also news and indicators and everything is like power packed in it and some of the trade bots actually they charge you money for all this okay one second yes they actually charge you money for all, all this stuff but there are trial versions also so you can use them same goes with the vector west and the trade ideas and uh, uh, holly ai stock trading bot so as in the starting of the session i already said you like uh, this is not a, a lecture so this is this should be an interactive session so you guys can unmute and ask me any kind of questions and um, i'm not an expert actually if i'm not able to answer you can uh, actually contact me later i can research on it and answer you again any questions guys you can post that in chat section also hello Now we are trying to deal with this time series data, no? Now we are trying to deal with this time series data, no? Yes, sir. Like uh, there are like various time stamps over here. Are you able to see my screen, sir? Yes. Yes. So in, in yes, time sir. series, so let's in, say in time series, let's say. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 
Okay. If I have to predict for next five years. If I have to predict for next five years. Five years, sir. For next five years. For next five years. Out. What is the future of this? Future of this. So there are various um, rail reasons for this. Sir. Just looking at the trends. technology pertaining to it then of course in 5 years that the stock is that cryptocurrency is going to be like uh, going very high okay so it actually depends on the new set and their uh, technological pattern like what what is that work they are doing that's it so thank you nayan The session has completely session oriented has completely us. Completely oriented. How AI us. is shaping. Me, we student of first year BCA for the presentation. Rashmi is a NPTEL coordinator, creative learner, expressive, and willing to have responsibilities. Rashmi, over to you. Good evening to everybody. Today I'll be talking about the role of AI in speech recognition. So before we start, it's very important for us to know what exactly is speech recognition. Uh, technically defining it, it could be basically referring to a computer interpreting the words spoken by a person and converting them to a format uh, which is understandable by a machine. So uh, speech recognition has uh, actually had a significant growth in recent times as businesses are increasingly adopting digital assistance and automated support to streamline their uh, services and as per the researches and markets the global market for speech recognition is estimated to grow at a rate of 17.2% and reach uh, nearly 26.8 billion dollar by 2025 that's a huge amount and uh, if we try and analyze the arrival of speech recognition technology the level of accuracy has reached 95% since its inception which brings the technology as normal as speaking secondly uh, secondary research also confirms the fact that by the end of 2021 majority of the speech engines will be using voice technology to cater all the search requirements and it is also predicted that in the years to come the number of voice activated smart speaker owners will also increase and uh, statistically it also indicates that already there are 2600 voice apps that are existing for consumers to use basic uh, principle of uh, voice recognition involves the fact that speech or words spoken is uh, causes a vibration and sound uh, waves creating them and uh, these are then digitized and decoded in proper words or sentences So uh, the structure of the speech recognition technology basically consists of a speech capturing device that uh, converts the sound signals to electrical signals and obtain the discrete data. It uh, also contains a digital signal modular that performs processing on raw speech signals and restores the required information only selected. And then it consists of a pre-processed signal storage that is used to store pre-processed speech in memory. in addition to this it also consists of a reference speech pattern that uh, constrains the user to refer, uh, refer for matching and lastly it consists of a pattern matching algorithm which matches all the data and uh, finalizes what is actually required uh, coming to the ai approach it's based on utilizing basic knowledge source such as sound spoken on basis of spectrum methods and vocabulary and this the recognition pattern depends mainly on three factors those being first isolated words uh, because when we speak simultaneously there's overlapping of words which becomes difficult for the chatbots to understand so isolated words reduces overlapping 
A single speaker, when multiple users uh, speak, it causes again overlapping of signals and co can cause misinterpretations as well. And vocabulary size. Now we know different languages have a different vocabulary size. Like some language have a sh uh, small vocabulary size and uh, co can cause less ambiguity if used. So uh, the languages with less vocabulary size are preferred over the others. And uh, coming to impact in various fields, uh, towards the end of 20th century, speech recognition has found a broad range of uses in computerized games, control for different instruments, data collections, and dictations. So these features also proved helpful uh, to those with certain disabilities as well. This technology has managed to make place in many fields. It can be used in uh, evolving search engines, uh, which is currently also in use, uh, it, um, where users can use a voice search over the traditional method of texting. In healthcare uh, industry, this feature has its um, use in medical reporting. When introduced, doctor had some troubles uh, using this because the machine was not well equipped with the medical terms. But uh, with time, it has uh, improved and uh, made it user friendly and accurate. Uh, its uses in service delivery has its application in various streams like airports for confirming the travel schedules, etc. Automated identification uh, also uses this to avoid providing risky information. Institutes opt for these speech recognition methods to authenticate um, identities of the clients and help uh, curb fraud and phone crimes. Voice recognition, uh, as we know, is a maturing technology and uses uh, users seem to trust it for most basic functionality like uh, searching or playing music. Uh, on screen is a survey by PwC Consumer Intelligence on usage of voice assistance conducted in 2018. This statistic clearly shows that user adoption of voice interface is still low for applications with most significant implications like buying things and controlling smart devices, which is expected to increase with time. Coming towards application, uh, voice search is the most common application uh, and in 2019, reports estimate that 112 million people in US uh, use voice assistance at least monthly up to 10% from last year. Voice commands to smart home devices uh, are those also a widely used voice recognition application specifying uh, specifically when we consider the total number of smart devices supported by voice assistance tripled between 2018 and 19. Uh, its business uh, functions include customer services, which is also considered to be the biggest application of speech recognition. It is effective uh, call center service solution that is available 24-7 within seconds. Voice biometric for security uh, also uses person's voice as a unique identifying characteristic in order to authenticate them. So it uh, improves the overall customer experience since it eliminates cumbersome login processes as well as lost and stolen credentials. Coming to its industrial applications, uh, speech recognition has found a huge opportunity in industrial fields, uh, being, first being automatic. Uh, In-car speech recognition system has become a standard feature for most vehicles, uh, like those systems aim to uh, remove the distraction of looking down at your mobile phone while you're driving. In academic, uh, the technology proves its potential by minimizing the dis uh, disadvantages of students who are blind and have no vision, so the voice factors can make a huge change. In media and marketing, uh, the dictating softwares can enable uh, users to write around 3,000 to 4,000 words of content within uh, some 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, though these uh, tools are not 100% uh, accurate, uh, but this can be beneficial for the first draft. Coming to the medical uh, uses, like we've already talked about, uh, it's used in medical field. The speech recognition can be used to take notes uh, so that the doctor can shorten their um, average appointment time and uh, attend more uh, people during, more patients during the same time. And it can also be uh, estimated to you, uh, uh, actually discuss the person's mental state by analyzing his own wise um, we can even predict whether the person is uh, for example in depression of suffering to any other uh, diseases mentally and psychologically using just their voice uh, speech recognition being in demand is predicted to soar high in market 
The key predictions include uh, mobile app integration. Voice activated apps make it easier for the end users to navigate between an app, even if they don't know what we actually are searching for. Coming to the next one, voice tech in healthcare, uh, like we've all witnessed in uh, 2020 and 2019, AI power chatbots played a vital role in the fight against the COVID-19. It has made health services more accessible to everyone who is unable to live home due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Individualized experience, um, voice assistants will continue to offer more individualized experience if they get better at differentiating voices. Uh, currently, if we see uh, Google Home is able to support up to six users, a user account, and de uh, detect unique voices, which can allow uh, Google Home to customize many features according to user's choice. Coming to voice and gaming industry, we all are well aware of games that have characters with dialogues and that are written. So in the upcoming years, the developers will be able to use sophisticated neural networks to mimic human notes so that we have a communicating feeling. And uh, some gaming design studios are also working hard to create and embed this dialogue block into the tools. So seeing games, including dynamic dialogue, isn't too far. The $55 billion voice recognition industry has been forecasted to grow at a uh, rate of 11%. 2016 to 2024. This technology has found good use in other industries among the smaller and lesser known firms in the form of transcription applications. And so this is one of the most emerging technology that can change the way we perceive technology. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. AI in speech resolution is something which is really unknown to most of us. Rashmi, it was really an eye opener for all of us. Thank you so much. Now I request Mr. Krishna Pasa to share his observation and remarks. Over to you, sir. Uh, uh, insights on applications of AI. So different applications, when I'm trying to just see it's, uh, three of the presentations was really good. Uh, but most of which, whenever we are trying to talk more about uh, the knowledge being acquired about uh, uh, different topics and also relevance to the context when we are trying to talk about AI and also more on uh, the presentation skills. Uh, among three, I would, uh, 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 the most of which were uh, with respect to relevance and the knowledge being presented on the same and also on the more on presentation skills i would uh, uh, like to know uh, i like to inform uh, uh, rashmi as a first uh, uh, speaker among all the three thank you sir rashmi congratulations thank you congratulations rashmi thank you sir now i request Professor Sheila Devi to propose President. Sir, the applications of AI that you brought into our notice was tremendous. And the, mainly the AI landscapes like enforcement learning, image analytics, and the major part was natural language processing. So with this also you mentioned about the deep learning and the robotics which was very informative. Hope so our students are enlightened by this, sir. And also you had shown a video to us, which was clearly telling that how AI is applied in each and every field, right from the entertainment to the big companies. We also have few AI, uh, which has been uh, has, uh, used as an assistance, like uh, AI personal assistance, AI lawyers, AI doctors, AI uh, do, uh, autonomous drivers too. So there's a movie where you can watch and know about this AI autonomous drivers. So these applications are high in market demand day by day, and they are giving a tremendous increase in the revenue too. There are a few AI aspirants also, which you clearly mentioned, sir, like healthcare and bank sectors. So why healthcare now? Because you also mentioned that due to the pandemic, the healthcare have been using these applications drastically. Not only 
uh, in healthcare, even the companies, there are different companies which you mentioned, like data driven, algorithm driven, and process driven, where AI is used in more efficient manner. Sir, you also told us about not only in uh, industries, not only for entertainment and not only for doctors, even the AI is used in education field where it is used for the plagiarism check and also for the virtual learning. learning. And one of a student, when he asked about the question about defense, you were clearly, you were so clear that the uh, AI is used mainly in intrusion detection and even for the drone technology. Sir, your beautiful insights has really enlightened us and has given us more information. And you also mentioned the core strengths of AI like domain knowledge, critical thinking, programming skills, and statistical knowledge. So with all such informations, all can know how AI is competent enough in the fast technology-driven world. Thank you, sir. We are all overwhelmed with your knowledge. Thank you, madam. Thank you. We are at the end of the session. I thank resource person, Mr. Krishnappa Hullumani, sir, for his valuable insights on applications of AI. CEO, sir, Mr. Kirtan Kumar, student presenters, principal,